Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of PEP Workshop. How are you? My name is Carlos and I'm here with my co-host David Jackson. How are you, Dave? Doing good today, man. Doing good? How's the yeah. weather down in New Orleans? Ah, you know, it's heating up. We're pretty much in full summer now, so. <laughs> What's the humidity now? Oh, it's like 90%, something crazy. <laughs> oh, no, thank you. <laughs> well, well, here in Chicago, I think we just finally, after a few days of being in the 60s, we're finally back again to the 80s, um, or at least upper 70s, So, but it is humid here, too. Um, uh, that is one thing that we have just like you guys in New Orleans. Not as bad, but it's still very humid here in Chicago. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, but not as bad as you guys. I've been down yeah. there during the summertime, and as soon as I step out of the hotel, my, my glasses fog off oh, in God. the middle of the summer, yeah. you know, which only happens in the middle of winter here in Chicago, but not in the summer. That's, that's how bad it is down there. So I hear that we're moving. We're moving, man. Finally getting close. So, Finally getting close. We've been under construction for a little over a year now, so we uh, we're definitely looking forward to it and and all of the possibilities that come with a bigger facility and everything that we have in store. So it's going to be a uh, going to be fun. That is fantastic. So you know what? I want to take uh, take a little time to say hello to Chris everything wendy's here also let's see david polson is here as well rodney chupp is here and the sky high reef as well uh thank you so much for joining us and visiting us here we do these workshops at least every every other week we try to um uh, and uh, we try to cover a topic we pick a topic a basic topic and then we elaborate on the topic and then after that on the second half of the show we show you how to apply uh whatever we're talking to whatever talking about to the hydros controller so what are we talking about today uh dave what, what's today's topic so today we we talking about the wave engine and the uh the hydros wave engine was our first release uh, in the hydros uh, world and it was a strategic release in, in that we wanted to release this before we came out with the full controller system and kind of introduce people to the hydros uh, brand and and what we wanted it to accomplish with this was really getting people used to uh, the app and and being able to see what we could do in terms of controllability yeah and, the idea behind the wave engine is it's a, it's a, basically it's a third party pump controller. And not only can it control, but it's also a, a direct drive. Uh, you can directly drive pumps. You can uh, go wireless control via the Ecotech pumps. And you can also do zero to 10 volt control uh, via Tunzi pumps. Um, so, between all of those, you know, three control uh, protocols, we basically can bring all these different manufacturers' pumps into one cohesive control unit and have them as they're operating as one independent control system. Um, so you're taking multiple pumps and uh, configuring them into one app, one control system, and it makes it a, a a world of easiness, uh, so to speak, to to incorporate all your pumps. We have so many pumps in our aquariums now, from our circulation pumps to our wave pumps, and each one of those, as you know now, can requires their own power supply, and a lot of them require their own controller. So all of a sudden now you've got this big mess of power supplies. You've got this big controller board that people are having to find ways where do i put all of this stuff um it becomes very cumbersome it, it's uh it's a lot of equipment there's uh, thermal management to keep in in mind when you're talking about all of these power supplies and and controllers and where to place them so that's you know in a nutshell what we've done with this is we're eliminating power supplies we're eliminating controllers we're bringing them all into one cohesive control device through our Hydros app. 
And what we're here now to, to discuss is we've finally taken um, the Hydro's Wave engine and brought it into the, uh, the app, the Hydro's app, into the collective, meaning that you bring up your app and now you can control all your wave pumps, your main circulation pumps, all in one unit. Nice. Now, let me ask you a question, you know, because I was I was when I remember years ago when we first released the wave engine, uh, we were at a trade show and <laughs> and I'll tell you this anecdote because it's actually kind of funny is I was telling the you know, at the trade show, there was a gentleman and he had his wife right next to her and you could tell the wife was just humoring him at the trade show you know it was orlando so probably you know yeah i'll go to the trade show if you let me go to disney world or if you or this you know if you or let me go shopping and the guy yeah. said okay or the wife said okay you know so um uh, so she came over and i was telling the guy about the wave engine and how it replaces pumps and how it replaces power supplies and you could see the wife was just wandering eye, just kind of looking around not even paying attention and then i told and i said I said, and it'll rem it'll take away a lot of cords and take a look at this. And I took her to the other side of the booth where it showed all the power cords. And all of a sudden it was like this, huh? You know, it's like, what? And that I had the wife, the wife was all ears about this. And then I had the, guy, the wife telling us like, here, honey, that's what you have to do. You have to get this. And then the wife was like, where do we buy this? How can we get this? It was hilarious. So. Yeah. The, way, the, the wave engine not only helps you f to flow pattern, but trust me, it'll also win you some brownie points with your significant other, you know? It's, it's such a, a, a clutter reduction. It, it's amazing. Um, this tank behind me, I had so many power supplies and, and uh, individual controllers. And, you know, one of the big things is when I would open the doors to the tank, you could physically feel the heat coming out. And once I reduced uh, all these power supplies uh, and controllers just from this wave engine, the, the temperature well, it alone was a huge reduction. And I have a chiller on this tank, but it, it significantly reduced the runtime just because of that amount of heat that's produced from all these power supplies and controllers. Yeah, not only that, I mean, if, if you, it, like Dave, if you, if you are strategic about the pumps that you're using, if let's say you use a, a, a Gyre 350 and an ice cap 1K, and then you say an Octopulse, and then you throw in a various pump in there, all those four pumps can actually run with a single power supply and a single wave engine. I mean, yeah. that's, that's how, that's, so you reduce from four power supplies, you've went to three power supplies. And not on, only on top of that, you are now controlling those four pumps together as if they were built by the same manufacturer. When in this time, in this era, in the hobby, every manufacturer wants to create their own environment, their own controller, and nobody wants to talk to each other, you right. know? You know, yeah. so, so the wave engine is kind of like going against the grain. The wave yeah. engine is, is going upstream. Everybody's moving towards, you know, um, uh, individualized systems. Yeah. And the wave engine says, no, wait a minute. We, we don't want that. That does, not, that does not help the end user. We need yeah. something that helps the end user. And the only thing you have to do is, is you're going to have to connect. You have to buy a couple of, you know, pigtail adapters that you get and they're like nine ten dollars each and that allows you to grab the specific plug that the manufacturer included yep, in that pump to connect to the wave engine because again since pump manufacturers are making everything to their own world that what they do is they make their own connectors that yep. don't work together with other connectors and that makes it a little bit harder so you yep. end up so you so what you end up doing is you can connect an ice cap gyre to the little pigtail and then that little pigtail allows you to connect the pump to the wave engine, which right. makes it a lot easier. So, you know, it's, it's a, the wave engine, it, it, you know, what? Let's, let's be honest. The wave engine is not something that you're required. It's not something that you need to succeed, but it's something that does make things a lot easier. Do yep. I need to drive a Lexus to go from point A to point B? Not really, I can probably take a bike, but yep. you know what? I like the nicer ride. 
I'm in a position where I can afford the nicer ride, so I'm going to get the nicer ride. Yep. You know, it's up to you. It's up to you. It's you yeah, know. Let's it's, be it's honest, Carlos. Uh, you know, each pump has some specific uh, features to it that uh, some hobbyists may like, and uh, they want to use somebody else's pump, mm -hmm. and you know, such as a gyre. Uh, in, in combination with a, an Ecotech Vortec. Both great pumps, totally different characteristics in terms of flow. This gyre style pump, it's a, it's a, creates a laminar flow. It's very straight, streamlined. Mm -hmm. It goes to the end of the tank, it curves back down. Whereas a propeller driven pump creates this wide circular uh, flow pattern. Both, both totally different, but both have great features to them. Now yeah, this yeah. gives you a way to tie them in together and working same flow patterns where yeah. they're working off of each other. So you know I yeah I yeah I and I don't like to say that the gyre is better than the Ecotech Vortex because they're because you're trying to compare oranges, apples and oranges. You're not comparing oranges to oranges. So we're not here to say that the gyre is better than the Vortec or the eco or the Vortec is better than the ice cap. You know what? I have both pumps in my tank. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. Yeah. You know, so also, excuse me, I had a sneeze. <laughs> I'm a, okay, so the other thing that you could do also is that you can also connect pumps via zero to 10 volt um, connection, right? That, Dave, yeah. tell me about that. Tell me about that. So zero to 10, uh, you know, it's, it's just a, another control mechanism or protocol. So we can now incorporate the Tunzi pumps. Uh, Tunzi's a, a great pump. These, they've been around for a long time. Um, and in order to communicate with them through their DEN connector, uh, we use in the zero to 10 volt protocol and that allows us to basically communicate through our app and incorporate all the other uh, pumps in with it exactly exactly so um, um you know you can connect a tunzi pump you can connect an octopulse pump you can connect a various six or a various four or a various eight as well and on top of that you can connect the tunzi all from the same wave engine because the wave engine has four four individual channels that can connect four different pumps which makes it a lot nicer all right yeah. so the wave engine also can connect can actually control the ecotech pumps yeah so there's two different models of the the wave engine and uh the one the standard model well, you know, you can control all of these other pumps, but with the Ecotech model, it's a separate model. It requires their wireless protocol and that, that uh, ETM card is included with that model. So if you know you want to incorporate your ETM pumps with the wave engine, then that's the model you're going to want to choose. Uh, if you don't have ETM pumps, well, then you can uh, choose the standard model. Yeah. So yeah. And that's and actually, you don't have a limit in terms of how many pumps you can connect to it. Well, there's a limit, but, you know, it's, it's so far out there. Nobody's going to yeah. actually get to that point. Yeah. But, you know, the wave engine actually runs like an antenna. So what, what it does is Ecotech works by uh, sending out three. The master control pump sends out three different signals, sends, uh, you know, sync, anti-sync, and back, if I remember correctly. Um, um, and then you have white, orange, and cyan. The controller actually changed colors like that. So, but the way the Ecotech works is that the master sends out a signal, and then the slaves are tuned to receive that signal. It's almost like a te it's almost like a television signal. You know, downtown in the city, there is a bit. You know, the 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 you know ABC building sends out the you know the ABC signal, and then any television that is tuned to that channel picks up the signal. If you're not tuned to that channel, it doesn't pick it up. So technically, you know, ABC doesn't know how many TVs are actually connected and listening to the channel seven. Now there's ratings that you can do and there's a mathematical formula the television that, that they came they came back that they the the television industry developed some time ago, but it's not even it is not that accurate anymore, you know, because a lot of people watch the thing online. So I don't know if that takes into consideration. 
But anyway, that's what happens. So the Ecotec, the, the wave engine sends out a, a, a sync, anti-sync, and back signal. So if you have one pump listening to the sync, then that's what it'll play. You could have two or three pumps and so forth. Yep. So you technically are not adding the actual pumps to the wave engine. You're just enabling the wave engine to send that signal, and then you tune your slave pump to that signal or how many, however many slave pumps you want for those particular signals, and that's how it runs. Yep. So that's a little bit of an insight into the Wave engine. All right, guys, if you like the show, if you're, wa if you're watching here, um, um, tell your friends. Tell your friends yeah. to visit us. We have a lot of uh, great information. If this is your first time watching, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that little bell, and you'll be notified right away when we go live. In addition to that, if you have any questions, you know, we try to answer questions here, but if we could not answer your question, please head on over to forum.coralviewhydros.com and ask your question there. One of us will answer it, and we have this fantastic community of fellow users here that are always willing and happy to help out. I want to say hello to Ricardo Lasso. Frankie's here. Don is here also. Rob is here as well. Ha Harkins Aquatics as well. And the Smoking Reefer is here as well. So thank you so much for visiting us. This is yeah. fantastic. So Dave, now the whole point of the show is what? We're going to bring, we're going to show you how to bring the... Yeah. We're going to bring the wave engine into the collective. So, so what is the collective? What is this we keep saying collective? So, you know, with, with hydros, we talk about this uh, diversified way of uh, tying in devices, the hydros devices. And each device, hydros device, is its own master. It's, uh, it's, it's like it's its own signal or basically a, a memory, a brain. And, you know, other systems, there's only one main controller, you know, one main brain. So the, with the hydro system, there's multiple um, paths uh, or rather devices that uh, can take uh, redundancy. And whereas uh, if something should fail, the other device can pick up. And yeah, this this kind of gives you a good illustration. Um, yeah. Whereas one device, you know, the brain should fail. All these other devices tied to that are going down with it. And hydros, you have multiple units, multiple brains that are redundant and take over should something fail. So, so that's kind of the, the the collective in a nutshell. And, hmm. But go so ahead, Carlos. Maybe I'm missing. Uh, something. I no, no, I was going to ask. So technically what you're saying is the, the hydros is a collection of multiple brains that, it can, that are capable of thinking by themselves and make, make um, decisions based on criteria that you've given it to them. If one brain fails, then the other brains take over and pick it up and everything continues to run. But on the other controllers, there's only one brain with a surrounded by modules. And Correct. the modules are unable to make decisions, you know, by themselves, or at least decisions between that, that rely on other modules. So they're not interconnected. They can make a decision for themselves to whatever's connected to themselves, but they can't make decisions based on other modules in there. They need that brain in the middle. And yeah. if that brain were to fail, then all the modules would technically fail. While with the Hydros Collective, if one brain fails, the other brains come up and, and pick it up. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a team effort compared to a, you know, an individual sport. Correct. Okay. That's, that's kind of cool. So in order to bring the wave into the, wave into the collective, let's talk about hardware first. What do we need? Mm -hmm. All right. So what, I, what we're going to do is um, um, the wave engine can be brought into the collective. This is something that people have been asking forever. They've been asking for us for a long time. You know, how do we bring the wave engine into the collective? Can I bring the wave engine into the collective? Can I do this? So finally, people want to change. We gave them change. Um, um, so I'm going to ask um, our producer, April, to go to image, image 14, please. OK, so now we have a wave engine a control four and a control two, all linked together as part of one system. So we were talking about the collective where, you know, with the other 
companies, the control four would be the main brain and the control two and the control uh, in the wave engine would be modules and they wouldn't be able to work together. But now, because there is, the wave engine has a, um, the wave engine, uh, I'm sorry, because the collective, the hydros collective, then you have the control four, the control two, and the wave engine all working together with their own brains and they all work as one individual. As you can see, the wave engine, the control four, and the control two are connected together with a data only cable. In order to create a collective, you need to connect, to physically connect the devices together using a cable through the command bus ports. And you can see the command bus ports as blue. You know, in addition to that, with the wave engine, is that the wave engine can also power the pumps and also power any control units that are connected to itself. So in this case, the wave engine and the wave engine's power supply is supplying power to the control four and the control two on the right. So that's one more step of getting rid of power supplies. Yep. Notice that we have, you need a Hydro's command bus cable. You need to physically connect them together. So otherwise it's not gonna work. The way you get the reliability on the, on the collective is by connecting the devices together with a cable. Now you don't have to run 20 cables to connect to all the, 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 all the inputs and all the sensors that are connected to each brain. You only run one cable to each, between each brain and all the information goes between the brains. You know, that is what makes it great. Another thing that you need with the collective is you need a terminator. And this is a question that I get all the time. This is something that I get all the time on the support portal is my, I created a collective and the collective is not working correctly. And that's because you're missing a terminator. Okay. That is something that you have to use because we're using command, uh, we're using canvas. So this is something that you know, your cable company uses, term, the cable company uses terminators. Um, uh, so does the auto and so does the airplane. They all use terminators. It, it increases the reliability of the command of the CAN bus uh, substantially. So yeah, I'm going to just say, Carlos, it's, it, it's, it's not a hack or something it, it nope. it's kind of goofy. It's just the CAN bus protocol and what they are specified yeah. for this communication protocol. Exactly. It's not. It's it, yeah. Exactly. Like Dave said, it's not a hack. It's actually required by CAN bus, and it makes. And that's what make. That's part. Of, that's one of the elements that makes CAN bus so reliable to the point that they're used. The CAN bus is used to deploy car airbags. Is used to um, have communication in airplanes in airplane cockpits. So you know. Trust me, this is not a hack. If it was a hack, you wouldn't use it on the, as an airbag and you wouldn't use it on an airplane. So yeah. um, uh, the reason why they use it, one of the reasons, one of the many reasons why they use it is because of that Terminator. Okay, it makes it a more reliable. You know, you don't use, they don't, you, don't see a, you don't see an airbag using a USB port or an Ethernet cable. It's just not, reli it's not reliable enough. All right, so you also have another option where you can actually um, uh, create a collective with, um, um, different power supplies, you know, and I'm getting into much, much more detail in here than, than we should, but um, uh, you can actually have re what we call redundant power supplies or power islands, where you have the wave engine powering your control four, and then you have a control two far away from it that you want it to communicate, but at the same time, you're gonna have to power it separately. And that's where you actually have um, 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 a collective with islands. And the difference between this collective and the one before is the power is the power is the I'm sorry is the command bus that connects from control two to the second control two. So if you can see the the, the control two in the center and the control two on the right, there is a cable that is more than 15 feet long, and that's a data only cable. So now you have redundant power supply, which is great because what happens if the power supply on the wave engine fails? then if you don't have that redundancy, then all your devices come down because you have, that's the, that, that would be the weak link. That would be the power supply. But by doing it this way, if the wave engine fails, then the wave engine and the control two in the middle 
would drop because obviously there's no power, but the control two on the right hand side would continue to work, would take over all the tasks of the Wi-Fi strips and it would keep your tank running. So, you know, that's where the collective comes into play. The more devices you have, the stronger of a system you have as well. Yep. You know, so again, guys, you're watching CVTV workshops. We're talking about the collective and the wave engine. Um, um, if you want to, if you like the show, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit those, that little bell right there to tell you when, you know, we're having a show. Also, if you have any questions, again, we try to answer questions in here, and I see a lot of people asking questions, and I see a lot of our regulars here answering those questions. But if your question doesn't get answered, please head on over to forum.coralviewhydros.com and ask the question. And you know, one of us will get it, or one of the fellow briefers that use the control all the time will get it. There's a fantastic DIY version in there, because amazingly enough, our controller, the Hydros controller, is very easy to use, and it actually has a very robust DIY section of a lot of things that you can do. So, Dave, you know, in our next segment, in about what 90 seconds, we're going to be talking about how to bring the Wave Engine into the collective. Yeah. You know, so let's go ahead and do that. But before we move on to the next um, um, next segment, I'll see you back in 90 seconds. Welcome back. <laughs> April is uh, yeah. not only you getting great with the with the commercials, but the music is actually getting pretty hip. Yeah. Um, um, that is fantastic. Yeah. So welcome back. We're here, Carlos. I'm your host, Carlos, and Dave, my co-host here, and we're yeah. talking about wave engines, how to bring them to the collective. But before we cover that, I, I want to point out there's a, you know, we also get questions on the feed. And Rodney Chubb has a great question. It says, another question, if a node, go, and he's referring to a brain, if a node or a brain goes down and some output depends upon an input on that node, how does the collective handle it? It's actually quite interesting. And what it does is when you define the output based on an input, let's say I define a return pump that is connected to my Wi-Fi strip. And then on my, you know, control four, I have a control four and a control two. And I have the pump based on a leak detector that is connected to my control two. So when I define that control, when I define that return pump, there's a, there's a field on the form that says if input unavailable, okay? And then it gives me the option, default to off or default to on. So if by some reason that control two fails power, it shuts down, and then the control four sees, okay, the control two is missing, and I can't reach that leak detector. So therefore, if I cannot see that leak detector, I'm gonna shut down the, the return pump, or I'm gonna keep the return pump running. So that's how it handles those. So it's smart enough to know what to do in terms of you know, if some node is missing. Unlike if you lose your brain, 
then there's no other brain to decide what to do in the absence of one brain. Correct. Right. That was that was kind of that was kind of hard to think about. Okay, never mind. All right. So that's how you do it. All yeah. right. So in this section, I'm going to show you how to bring a wave engine into the collective, which is quite simple, actually. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, before we uh, before oh, we go sure. talk about collective, mm -hmm. or rather, I would just wanted to say when we talk about collective, Carlos, we're talking about multiple devices, correct? Like if somebody yeah. just has one hydros device, you're not going to set up a collective. No, I mean, that's a, a collective of one is not a collective, it's an individual. Well, just so. because we've seen that happening, but I just wanted to kind of bring that up is collective yeah. meaning multiple devices, more than right. one brought in together. Yes, yes, exactly. And, you know, at the end of the day, the competitive advantage and, you know, Alex, Alex, great to see you here. But the competitive advantage between, you know, us and every other controller out there is the collective. Yeah. That's what sets us apart. Is the collective. Yes, we we also have no programming, no coding. I don't have to I don't have to degree I don't have to degree I, I don't have to have a degree in computer science to run the the controller. But um uh, in addition to that, the collective is what makes the difference. That's what makes us different from the other brains. So let's go ahead and talk about the um, the collective and how to bring the collect how to bring the wave engine into the collective. All right, so I'm going to have April and uh, I'm going to have April uh, share my screen. You can see right here. Thank you. Okay, and what we're going to do is we are going to bring the collect. We're going to start with a control four. Um. um and what you see is I have a control four that is a pretty simple control four is set up. I just have a return pump and a skimmer, nothing fancy. You know, I don't want to keep it. I don't want to keep it too hard. And then I also have a wave engine right here that is running, and it's got you know an octopulse four, a couple of octopulse fours, and a couple of uh, gyre three fifties here. Okay. And what we want to do is I want to bring this wave engine and this control four together into one section. And the reason why I want to do that is because I want to be able to hit feed and have the wave engine, you know, um, had my skimmer shut off and have the wave engine stop the pumps and all together. I don't want to go, I don't want to, I don't want to have to go here and type feed to, start to shut off my skimmer and then go into the wave engine and, and hit feed to turn off the pumps. So that's what we're going to do. And it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward to do it. The only thing that we need to keep in mind is that, just like anything else, only the first device, when you first create your collective, is the settings are imported into the collective. So when I create my collective with the control four, what's going to happen is all the settings from the control four are going to be imported into the collective. Then when I add any subsequent device into the collective, those devices are going to come in as blanks. Okay? They're going to come in as blanks. That is, that is just the catch of the collective. All right? So let's go ahead and do that. So I have a control four. I'm going to go here. I'm going to hit that plus. Uh, sorry. I have the control four right here. And I have a status. Go here and hit the plus symbol. Create a new collective. And now remember, I'm doing this through my web app, so that's why I don't have access to the Bluetooth. Otherwise, you would see your devices here listed. But you know, it doesn't matter because we don't need to go into that. We need to create a new collective. So I'm going to create a new collective. It says to create a collective, you must have a minimum of one hydros device control, not a wave engine. So the collective cannot be created with only a wave engine. You need a second device. Again, you don't want to create a collective with just one device. That defeats the purpose of a collective. You need one command bus cable. And yes, two terminators would be ideal. You can get away with one, but ideally two terminators, one on each end of the chain. So I'm going to head, I understand. OK. Create a new collective, please ensure the following. The device you're using, create the collective is selected as the active device, which we did. You are getting a status from it, yes. 
you have to get a status from that. You cannot, if you cannot get a status, if you're having Wi-Fi issues, you cannot create a collective. If you create a collective, it's not going to work correctly. So you got to make sure that you're able to connect to both devices or three devices individually first before you can actually create a collective. And don't forget, again, look at this. A Terminator is installed in its command bus. Yes, that should tell you right there that the command, the Terminator is pretty, pretty damn important. Okay, so I'm gonna collect collective name and I'm gonna call the collective uh, CV, let's call it CVTV. There you go. And then create. So it's gonna go ahead and run this little, my give me my little things and it says, please be sure to upload your new collective now or any imports will be lost. Again, just, you know, all the triggers to follow the directions, you know, and now I'm going to go ahead and upload the changes. Uploading to CoralView, and then give it a few seconds. Usually the first time you create a collective, you get that, um, um, you get that little, uh, takes a little longer because it's got to do a lot of things on the server to make it work correctly. All right, and there you go. So now I'm going to go back in here, and you can see right here, collective call CVTV. And as you can see, my control unit is no longer listed because the control unit is no longer an individual. Now the collective is the individual. The collective is the, 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 the virtual controller that is made up of multiple brains. So I'm going to go into the collective, and as you can see, everything is here. See? Now I have the collective symbol. No, this is not the nuclear waste symbol. It's a collective symbol. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty close to that. And then you see the return in the skimmer. And I'm going to switch this to tiles because that's what I like to see. There you go. You can see everything. So now I have access to my collective, and I'm going to get ready to bring my wave engine. Now, remember how we said you have to have access to the wave engine as an individual before you bring it into the collective. So let's double check on that. So I'm going to go back in here, my devices, and I'm going to go to Hydro's Wii. And as you can see, I'm able to see my status. Everything is fine. So let's go back to the collective, waiting for the status. And now I'm going to go to the upper left-hand corner, hit devices. And now I'm going to hit the plus symbol and Hydro's device, and now I can select my Wave Engine, and you can see it's listed here. It's gonna recognize what devices are available and ready for you to, to uh, bring in. The collective, the Wave Engine can never be a Wi-Fi priority, and we already did that for you. So the Wi-Fi, the, the Wave Engine cannot be a Wi-Fi master, but every other device can. So I'm gonna go ahead and upload the changes. And again, now it's gonna send the signal to my Control 4, and it's gonna send the signal to my Wave Engine, telling, hey, Wave Engine, you're no longer an individual. Now you are part of the collective call CVTV. It takes a few seconds for that first, you know, to send the signal. It's all done. So now I'm going to go back to my status. And as you can see right here, look at that. I have my Control 4, which I had named Coral View, and I have my Wave Engine in here as well. Now they are part of a single individual, um, um, individual being. And uh, that makes it better, you know, because now it's easier for me to control both devices instead of just individually go back and forth. What do you think, Dave? So far, so easy? Yeah, man, it's pretty simple, huh? Yeah, it's pretty simple. Now, as I said before, guys, the second device, third, any subsequent device that I bring into the collective comes in empty. So as you could see in my screen, the, I retained the return pump and the skimmer, but my wave, my wave engine pumps, my uh, gyre and my octopus, they're gone. And that is just one of those things that ha that happens with the collective. If you just, you know, most people, you know, have, uh, you know, if most people that already have a wave engine, we apologize. It, it's, you know, it, it would have taken a long time and it would push back the process even further to um, uh, to incorporate those pumps into the collective and bring them in so that made it a little bit more difficult so we decided to kind of you have at some point you have to draw the line and said okay we're going to release it and uh, this is something that we can that we can that we can handle ourselves and the customers can handle themselves as well so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to add a couple of pumps and tell the schedule tell the wave engine how to run them you know, that's it. So adding pumps is a two-step two, two process. First, you have to tell the wave engine 
what pump and where the pump uh, where the pump is connected. And you have to tell the collective, I'm sorry. The collective has to know where, which device. The collective needs to know you're connecting an Octopulse 4 to the Wave Engine direct drive port number one. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's go ahead and do this. So I'm going to add an output. So here, add an output, plus I'm going to call it OP4 left. OK, there you go. And I'm going to create type. It's going to be a flow pump. Here you go. See that? You're creating a flow pump. Model is going to be an OP4. So I can select an Octopus 4, OK? For my purposes right now, because I don't actually have an OP4, this is a setup that I have. This is not my live setup. I'm going to just call it a demo pump, OK? All right? And then I'm going to go ahead and upload the changes. Obviously, you wouldn't do a demo pump. You would just tell it exactly where it is. So here, you have the model and then, you know, demo pump. If I had an OP4, so if I do an OP4, you can see right here, output device, it would ask me exactly where. So the collective already knows you only have one wave engine, therefore you only have four drive ports. If I had multiple wave engines to the collective, I would see, you know, I would see four, I would see four, uh, I'm sorry, I would see two options. I would see Hydro's Wii Direct Pump 1 and then the other wave engine pump direct pump one and fourth. So based on how many wave engines you have, you have more options here. So I'm gonna go back to I'm gonna go back to the um, um uh, to the, the demo pump in here to for, for make to making things easy for me and so I don't get an error in there that the pump is missing. All right, so let's go back to our status and you can see right there OP4 left. Now the pump is idle. So remember, it's a two-step process. So first step, I told the wave engine, or I told the collective, what pump and where is it? Now, the step two is tell the wave engine how to run that pump. How do I want that pump to run? So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to go ahead and create a new pump. So we have two at least. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to do OP4 right, create, let's do flow pump. I'm going to do a demo pump as well, but you can actually specify the type and then it'll ask you where to go. And then I'm up uploading the changes. As you can see, once the, the wave engine, the changes now, the uploads are much, much faster. You know? All right. So we have status and we have two pumps right there. And I'm going to change it to tiles because I like tiles better. There you go. So you got two pumps and they have nothing. Right now, I the wave the collective is saying, I have two pumps, but I don't know what to do with them. So now I have to create a flow schedule. So I'm going to go to my left here, and I'm going to go to schedules. I'm going to create a schedule. It's called day. Create. Type. It's going to be a flow pattern. All right? Then pattern. You have all these options and different flow patterns that you can do. And you can go to our website, coralvhydros.com, and there's a page in there that shows you each flow pattern and describes what each flow pattern does. I like sine wave. I'm a big fan of sine wave. So I'm going to make that cycle duration 30 seconds. Pump count, I'm going to do here. This is a slider, not a drop down. So by default, it shows me one pump and automatically just randomly chooses one pump. Usually the first pump I created. So, but I want this to be both pumps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this to two, OP left and OP right. See that? It automatically does it. Same end, same end. Now, obviously I want them to run anti-sync, so they're technically not the same end. One is opposite. So I'm going to leave OP left the same end, and I'm going to do this one that's opposite. And then I want the start time to run from 8 in the morning until 10 p.m., all right? And running every end day, this is a nice feature that we added. And it's like if you want to run the schedule every other day, every two days, every three days. So if I want to run it every other day, it runs today, and it would run on Saturday. If I want to run it every two days, it would run today, and it would run on Sunday, so forth. Or if you want, you can actually select the day of the week. So 
by default, all the days of the week are pre-selected. But let's say I just want to run this schedule, you know, on Saturdays. Then I can just go ahead and do this. And that would run this schedule only on a Saturday. But I want it to run every day because I like it every day. It's my day schedule. I'll do that. Okay. And then I could do something really cool here. It says, you know what? I have gyres or I have LP4s and they're very high in my tank. If my return pump were to stop, the water level in my tank is going to drop. And if it drops, then it, the pumps might become exposed to air. At that point, I want the pumps to stop. This is where the collective comes into play because now I can rely on a pump that is running on the collective to affect the how the schedule runs. So I'm going to do it. You know what? I'm going to do depends on. And I'm going to put depends on my return pump. So if my return pump is off, I want this schedule to turn off because I don't want my pumps to run dry. I'm going to go ahead and upload the changes. All right, done. Let's go back to the status. And look at that. There you go. My OP4 left and my OP4 right are running now. So as you can see, before, when I had just defined the pumps, the pumps were zero. They didn't know what to do. I didn't tell the controller how to do it. It's a computer, guys. A computer will only do what you tell it to do. A computer will not make any assumptions. So in this case, once I defined the schedule and told it which pumps I want, then the pumps started running. Let's go ahead and add another schedule. I'm going to go ahead and add another schedule. Go to schedules here, and I'm going to call it night, okay? And I'm going to call create. Then it's going to be a flow pattern. It's going to be a sine wave. You know what? I don't want it to run at 100%. Let's run it at 50%, okay? Also going to see two pumps, left and right. I'm going to make this one opposite end. Then I want this one to start at 2,200 hours, and I want it to end at 8 o'clock in the morning the next day. And again, I want it to stop if the return pump is off. There you go. So let's go ahead and click that. So there you go. So now I have a day schedule and a night schedule that will tell my pumps exactly when to run. And on top of that, if I were to turn off my return pump, look what happened. My skimmer shut off because my skimmer is dependent on my return pump. But look, also because my return pump shut off, my pumps also turned off, which is great. Now I'm going to return this pump back to auto, and look at that. Now we can add some delays in here, and I can add some delays in the skimmer. So when I turn my return pump on, it waits a couple minutes before the skimmer and the pumps go back on. You could do that as well. But, you know, you, you get the effect in here that you have dependencies, okay? And that's what makes it, that's what makes the wave engine integration into the collective so great because now you have one point of access for everything. Now we talked about feeding, all right? I want to go ahead and turn my feed and I want to turn off the pumps. So let me go back in there and create a new schedule. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new schedule and it's gonna be called feed create. I'm going to be a flow pattern. It's going to be constant. I'm going to go ahead and, you know what? I want to run my pumps at minimum speed when it's feeding. All right. So all I do is I make it 1%. I go back to two pumps. Now I have those. It's constant. So it doesn't matter which one is same or opposite, sync or anti-sync. They're constant. They're all run at 50%. So it doesn't make a difference. For time, I'm going to leave it all the time, so it runs all the time. But the trick is active in modes. In this case, I want it to be active only during feeding. Let me go ahead and upload the changes. Okay. So now I have a flow pattern that should only run when the feeding is um, um, when the feeding is um, uh, enabled. And here, we got a failed right here. Probably some kind of uh, glitch on the Wi-Fi connection. So all I want to do is, it said upload fail. So now it gives me the opportunity again. It happens sometimes. You know, it's Wi-Fi. You know, your router might be tricky a little bit. So you could just try a little bit. Try a second time and it went right away. So, you know, it's actually pretty easy to do. So now, 
I have a feeding. Now, if I do click on feed, now the feed schedule is supposed to run. Now, I did this on purpose. The other schedules, I didn't tell the other schedules to run only on normal and not run on feed. I still have to go back to the other two schedules, the day and the, and the night, because they're still, they, right now, because we didn't go into the active in, they are running everywhere. So instead of going to each schedule, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into modes, I'm gonna go into feeding, and then look at the bottom right here. Now, during feeding, I don't want my skimmer to run, I don't want my day schedule to run, and I don't want my night schedule to run. All I want is I want to run my return and I want to run my feed, and then hit upload again. So you don't have to, you could go to each outlet and configure it and go into active in and then turn off the feeding, or you can just go into the mode itself and you have the list of everything there and then you can turn it off. It's a matter of convenience. You know, we're trying to make it as easy as possible. So there are multiple ways to do certain things. So now, if I turn feed on, look at that. My pump, my, return, my skimmer turned off as it should have, and then my return pumps are running at minimum speed. Minimum speed. That's the lowest speed the, uh, the, the octopus force will run. Now, if I wanted to shut them off, all I have to do is go back to the schedules, feed, and instead of running it at minimum speed, I would say zero. I'm going to go ahead and upload the zero. And zero means turn the pumps off. So now I'm going to go back in here, go back to the status. I'm still in feed, but notice now the pumps are actually off. So if I were to, let's say this thing expired and it goes back to normal mode, as soon as it go back to normal mode, look at that, the skimmer turned back on and so did the pumps. They go back to their original um, uh, schedule. So, you know, what do you think, Dave? I love it. One of the, the, the nice features I like is the, the hurricane mode where I'll set the pumps, say, at the beginning of the hour. Every pump in the tank goes to 100%. Yeah. And what okay. that does is it gives the time for detritus and everything to start, you know, kicking up. And after five minutes, it'll go back to its normal flow patterns. So and let's, it really let's it. Yeah, it's let's really nice. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go back in here because we got time. We got a little time in here. So we're going to go back to schedules. All right. And I'm going to call it hurricane. Okay. And hit create. It's going to be a flow pattern. It's going to be constant speed. And I want every single pump to run 100%. Now, please, you know what? I have a 210-gallon system. Dave has a 400-something-gallon system. So please be careful. You know, just because the pumps can run at 100% doesn't mean they should. Run them at the maximum speed your tank, your aquarium allows. If you have a 40-gallon tank, you definitely don't want to run a Octopus 4 at 100%. It'll just, you know, end up with a big mess. So yeah. please, please take that into consideration. But, okay, so pump count, I'm going to select two pumps again, left and right. Again, constant speed, it doesn't matter. Same end, okay? I want it to run in... Active modes, now I want to make sure that it doesn't run on feed mode. So there you go. Start time and zero time. Well, you know, we could say run start time at 8 o'clock and, and off at 8.05, but that would just cause it to run once a day. And we don't want that. I want it to run multiple times a day. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select, again, return pump because I don't want this to run. I'm going to go ahead and enable advanced settings. Boom. There you go. So now what I'm going to do is advanced settings are not as hard as it, as it looks. It's actually quite easy if you, want, if you know what it means. So, Dave, when do you want the hurricane mode to start the very first time during the day, uh, on the day? What time? Maybe uh, 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Okay. So we're going to select 9 a.m. is the first time that schedule is going to run. Okay, Dave, run time. How long do you want the pumps to run at 100%? Five minutes. Five minutes. So let's go ahead and select five minutes. Okay. Now, Dave, how many times do you want this cycle to repeat? Every hour on the hour. Until what time? 
8, 8 p.m. Okay, so from 8 to 8 p. so 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., there's 12 hours. That mm -hmm. means I want the cycle to repeat 12 times. So yeah. I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to go in and make it 12 times. All right? And then how often, how long do you want this cycle to be? Five minutes. And then how often do you want the entire cycle to be? The, the, how, um, uh, how often do you want this cycle to repeat itself? Every hour? Yes. Okay. So your cycle, your interval, how often it repeats, it repeats every hour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab, make this a one. Sorry. Make this a one. Sorry. A one. There you go. And then make this a zero. Click OK. So this hurricane schedule will start its first time at 9 in the morning. Then it's going to run the pumps at 100% for five minutes. Yep. It's going to repeat 12 times. And each interval is one hour. So literally, it's going to run for five minutes. And then an hour later at 10 o'clock, it's going to run for another five minutes. Yep. Then at, nine, at 11 o'clock, another five minutes and so forth until it repeats 12 times. So by 7, so the 7 o'clock p.m. will be the last time. At 8 o'clock, it'll stop. All yep. right. So let's go ahead and click upload changes. And you know what? It's, it's 6 and 59 right now. So actually, it should, it should start very soon. So let's go ahead and... Go back to the status, and look at this. Right now, it's running my day cycle. So every pump is running, you know, um, uh, the day is scheduled. And yep. then in about a few seconds, I'm going to say in about uh, 15, 20 seconds, this day cycle should switch over to hurricane automatically. And what happens is it's going to run the hurricane for five minutes, as we specified, and then it's going to the hurricane is going to stop and then it's going to revert back to this day cycle. And then at five, at six o'clock, it's going to, I say, okay, I got to run the hurricane mode for five minutes, stir things up, make sure that the fish are whipped around. And then there he goes. Here you go. Hurricane. So now everything is running at 100%. And then at 1705, it's going to go back to your day cycle. Yeah. There. So that's how the hurricane works. As you can see, anytime, anytime you add on the schedule, anytime you enable, anytime you enable advanced settings, then the schedule automatically has higher priority than a schedule with no advanced settings. That's why the controller knows to stop day and run hurricane. Because both day and hurricane are supposed to run at the same time. But because hurricane has enable advanced settings enabled and day schedule doesn't, then the controller will give the hurricane mode a higher priority than the day. Okay? Yeah. If you have two schedules that have higher priority, like both, both the day and the hurricane both have enable advanced settings turned on, then you will get, you know what, it will be a toss up between what the controller decides to run at that particular time. It could run the hurricane or it could run the day, but it would be a toss up. So make sure that when you have overlapping schedules that you give one schedule a priority over the other one. That's pretty much the only difference in that one. But other than that, you can see everything is running as it should, you know. So what do you think, Dave? Pretty easy? I love it. I mean, you know, it, is this uh, something that you, you know, you must have on your aquarium? No, but I tell you what, you, you know, if you haven't had it and then you had to, or if you had it and then you had to have somebody take it from you, you would definitely miss it. It is just, uh, it, it really makes a, a night and day difference in terms of what you can do when it comes to flow pumps return pumps, how you can just incorporate everything together into this one cohesive uh, system. So exactly. it, it, it's definitely really a nice, nice device. Absolutely. You know, and, um, you know, I know we covered a lot on this workshop. This was kind of a big workshop, but, um, 
you can find instructions to everything we've done today. You can find instructions at CoralViewHydros.com, and we even include samples. So if you go to CoralViewHydros.com, you will see how to add a pump, mm -hmm. and you will see how to add a uh, schedule. You will see how to um, uh, add a mode, and then it'll give you examples of a day schedule. It'll give you examples of a night schedule. We even have an example of the hurricane schedule, which a lot of us here at Coralview use. Okay. So we have it on the website. You can literally, if you want, you can just copy it over, you know, field by field, or you can, you know, modify it, whatever, use it as a starting point. And we even have a feeding schedule um, uh, so that you can actually either turn off your pumps like we did when you set the schedule to 0%, or run them at minimum speed, which you sent the schedule to run at 1%. So we have all those examples. They're all at CoralViewHydros.com. So we don't have a PDF file that you can download and print. And the reason why we did that is because we are a new controller and things change all the time. And we want to make sure that people have the latest information at all possible times. What happens when you have a PDF file and you print it out and then we release a new feature that printout that you just printed doesn't have all the information that you need. So that's why. Plus, come on, guys, it's 2021. There's absolutely no reason to print stuff. Let's not waste paper in here. You know what? We want this little guys, the fish, to be here for my kids, for my grandkids. So printing paper when you don't have to, don't do it. You don't, you know, it's, 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 not, it's not worth it. You know, um, I know some of us are, don't like the computers. But, you know, hey, you know what? Having these things around for generations to come is way more important than, you know, a little inconvenience to me, you know? So that's, that, you know, that's my, that's my, you know, save the planet kind of a thing. And if you don't like it, you don't have to listen to it, okay? All right. So, Dave, so far so good. Easy. Yeah. Anybody have any questions so far on how to do it? I see a lot of people asking questions. I saw a couple of questions that we answered already. So again, if you like the show, guys, you're watching Coral View Hydro's workshops right now. If you like the show, if you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. Hit yep. the like button. We are streaming live on Facebook and YouTube, and we do this every two weeks. So if you subscribe, if you like it, if you hit that bell, you'll get a notification on your phone right away. Hey, Dave and Carlos are streaming. Let's check out what they're doing, you know? Yeah. You know, so it, it's it's a little fun. We have a little bit. You have questions, you can answer them. And yeah. also, if you have any questions and we didn't answer them, please head on over to forum.coralviewhydros.com and answer your and ask your question there. Some of, one of us will answer it, or there's a huge community of fellow users that are willing to help. Um, we are a small community, but you know what? You get one-on-one -on -one help, and you get an answer. Sometimes on the bigger forums. People put a question, put an answer in there, and or people ask a question, and maybe that question has been answered many times, and then the question doesn't get answered. So when you're in a small forum, the questions do get answered pretty quickly. Yeah. All right. Some people yeah. have asked about different pumps, and will we incorporate those into Wave Engine? And and the answer is maybe. It really depends on the manufacturer, and if they're willing to cooperate and. And that's really what it boils down to. We yes, we are yes. very much open to adding uh, whatever pumps um, that we feel are, are worthy of, of putting the engineering into it. But uh, yes. it, it ultimately depends on that manufacturer. But that's what we want to do. I'll give you an example. You know, there's a great question that James Goggin asked. Can Wave Engine control a Vectra main pump? And the answer is no, it can't. And the reason why is because not because we don't want to, because the Wave Engine controls the Ecotech Vortec pumps. But the problem is that Ecotech has decided that they're not going to release the API, which is the protocol, the method of connection between another controller and their pump. And without that information, without the help of the manufacturer, it's pretty impossible for us. It's pretty hard. for a, I'm not going to say impossible, but it's pretty hard for us to make it work. Now, could we make it work? Yes. But then the lawyers get involved, and you know, and the lawyers get involved as you know, then the world just stands still. And the reason why is because, yes, we could probably make it work. But the problem is, what if something happens to your pump? 
then you go back to the manufacturer and say, hey, my pump is not working. I'm running it on the wave engine and now it's not working. What is the manufacturer going to do? Good manufacturers will probably say, work with you and try to make it work. And uh, But some manufacturers, and we can't, I mean, I mean, this industry, just like any other industry, they're good manufacturers and they're bad manufacturers. Um, uh, a bad manufacturer would say, well, you're running it on the wave engine. That is not authorized. Therefore, your pump is out of warranty. And then you get stuck between two companies and you know, the wave engine, well, it's not our fault. You know, it's, it's the manufacturer, it's a bad pump. And then the, man, the manufacturer says, well, it's not our fault, it's the wave engine. You feel like a utility company and you're stuck in the middle. So we do not want to put you in that spot. So that's why, because of the lawyers, we only work with manufacturers that will stand behind their product and will honor the warranty, even if you use the pump with the hydros. Uh, collective or the hydros environment. That's a lot, the reason a lot of uh, a lot of want questions that come up is about the J bow pump, and that's a, yes. a very difficult one. Um, that is some uh, another one tied up in litigation with, between Max Spec, who we are the North American distributor for, and uh, the J bow uh, corporation. Mm -hmm. and yeah, so. Max Beck does own a, a patent on this pump, just like Ecotech has a patent on their wireless design. So yes, exactly. You want to be respectful of their intellectual property. Um, there is a zero to 10 volt j uh module that is sold out there. So you do have that uh, ability there. And we didn't really touch too much on the zero to 10 volt uh, availability on the wave engine but um you can purchase that and then control it via the zero to ten volt so that is one option you do have but yeah so correct, correct. Yeah, there's a lot of pumps out there we'd like to work with and uh you know anybody have any uh you know request of pumps they'd like to to use and see the hydros uh, wave engine work with it let us know exactly exactly well, everybody, that was our show for today. Thank you so much for joining us. I want to say thank you to Rodney. I want to say thank you to James for asking questions. Everything. Wendy, Don, you know, Michael Schrader's here, David Polson, Mark Kennery was here. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. I want to say thank you to April, our producer, for doing a fantastic job as always. Jeremy, our graphic designer. My co-host, Dave, thank you so much for joining us. Thank My you, name Carlos. My name is Carlos. We are CVTV Workshops. So please stay safe and have a good night. Good night.